Hey guys and welcome back to episode 5 of the DaVinci Resolve basic editing tutorial series here on Ugly McGregor and you know what in episode 1 I said this was going to be a weekly thing and you know if there's anything that's gone out the window it's that statement. So today we're going to look at working with audio within Resolve. Now sound is important, some argue that audio is in fact the most important part because you can get away with bad visuals but not bad audio so this is going to be an important base to cover. Now Resolve isn't a professional mixing software for audio but it does cover quite a lot so let's have a look at the basics here. Everything that we have learned in the last four episodes, well at least 95% of what we have learned with the video clips can be translated over with the audio clip. You can bring them into the source monitor to mark them in and out before inserting them into the timeline so you can have a, a precise snippet of your audio instead of the entire track. Remember with the video we could drag these little handles here to give the clip a fade in and out that works the same here but instead we are gradually increasing the volume from 0 to 100 instead. You can ripple edit, roll edit, we can search for audio in the edit index create audio smart bins, metadata, more or less everything that you can do for video clips, you can do for audio clips as well, except for the video specific task. You may notice that when you're working with audio, some things start to change ever so slightly. So for example, if I bring this video clip into the source monitor, we can see here that it says zoom in 100%, 200%, 300 and so on. If I bring an audio clip into the source monitor, I've instead got a multiplication option of the waveform instead of a percentage increase. There are really these little differences that will pop up when handling an audio file. Here I've populated my timeline with a few audio clips and we're first going to have a look at the clip mixer and the track mixer and the audio monitoring. If you remember from episode one, we brought up the volume mixer by hitting this musical note here. Now, just before we go into this, let's just run over what your levels should be because they should be a minus DB. But if you've never worked with audio, it may throw you off as usually a minus is a negative factor to something, you know, a minus bank balance isn't good but with audio it's a little different. Now here's uh, an article on premiumbeat.com a website that I write for. I didn't write this this was written by Caleb and in this article Caleb breaks down some of the recommended levels needed for the overall mix dialogue and so forth. The link to the article is in the description and um, when you initially press the musical note you're presented with audio meters for the overall mix for the first and second channel. Not that useful for other than monitoring your mix to see if it clips at any point. You can mute and unmute everything by hitting the speak icon button by here. But this is just the same as hitting the mute button on the viewer. So, you know, I, I don't know how useful you'll find having this open while you're doing your initial edit. More importantly, let's hit the drop down button here and we will first select clip mixer. The clip mixer is perfect for seeing the individual levels for every audio clip on your track instead of the track as a whole. As you see here, I have uh, the name of the audio appearing in audio one, but there's nothing in audio two, even though we have a few clips on the track. And that's because the audio will only appear in the corresponding area on the mixer when the playhead is above that clip. So if I move the playhead here, you can now see we have the information from the clip in track two appear in audio two. And all the adjustments you make will only affect this clip, not the track itself. So this also works if you take one clip, spice it up into several. So B for blade, make a few clips. Now if I make adjustments on the clip mixer, it only affects the clips in which the playhead is currently positioned over. There are several ways you can adjust the level and volume for a single clip. You can drag the fader up and down, you can drag the dB value left and right, you can drag the volume bar on the clip itself up and down, you can open the inspector and change the volume and pan from here as well, you can press Control, Alt, Minus or Plus. There are so many ways to do this and it's all to help you get the job done with haste. So let's have a look at what's going on with the mixer so we can decipher what exactly we are seeing with this information and what we can do with it. So the green numbers here are giving us our levels of the clip or track in real time. The color display on the mixer tells us where our audio sits regarding audible safety. Green is OK. Yellow is the low meter level, which will tell us that we have strong audio levels. Red is a warning to tell us that that audio level is too high and it should be lowered. You can also see on the audio clip itself when the volume of a certain area is too high. If you can see these peaks, uh, they're a lighter shade of green or whatever your color your clip might be. And this is another visual warning to say that the audio levels are too high and will likely clip. If you have a project and you've uh, specifically been told that the audio needs to be at a certain level uh, for an export or whatever it may be, and it's different to the default safe margin set by Resolve, well, you can change this by clicking the Gears of War cog and go to audio and here you can set your high and low meter. And just to quickly add, you also have a pan function here, which will send the audio from center to left or to right. 
This again can also be changed in the inspector and I actually prefer using it in the inspector if I ever need to pan an audio track, it just feels easier to control. So we're going to skip this drop down menu for the time being, we're going to come back to that later. So let's go back up to the musical note icon and change this to a track mixer. Now the track mixer affects all of the clips on a single track. This is useful for when you just need to give all of your clips a little boost. Or let's just use my case here for example, I just have my voiceover uh, today, no music uh, like usual as this is an audio tutorial and we need to hear the audio. I would usually use three tracks. There are edits within my voiceover where I've cut a deep breath away or perhaps I've stuttered with a word. So I have a few different clips on track one, maybe sometimes up to 15 whatever it may be. Using the track mixer in this case to higher or lower the volume is ideal and it's much more efficient. There are some differences with the track mixer uh, in comparison to the clip mixer. Next to the mute icon here there is a headphone symbol and this will solo the track so only track one will play the audio or track two. Uh, so when this is activated it will be in blue and if you're ever editing and cannot figure out why on earth only one track is playing it might be because you've selected the solo function. Here we have a stereo mono toggle we can also change what channels the audio is playing through, but this, and you know, if we come here, we can change what track type uh, to 5.1 surround sound, all this, you know, it. this is a basic tutorial, so we're going to skip all that area. And finally, on the mixer, you have the automation features, read, touch, write, latch, and off. This can get a little confusing uh, for many, um, so I'm just going to do my best to try and visually explain what these automation features do. First, we're going to open a curve editor and you do this by hitting this button and we can see how the different modes affect the clip. So our track or clip is automatically placed onto read. With this, there's no automation uh, that is being recorded. And it, when you have made adjustments in the other modes and you go back to the read mode, if you move the fader, perhaps just to maybe listen to see what it sounds like a little bit higher and you let go, it's just going to fall back to the recorded settings. Now touch will start recording an automation as soon as you move the fader and the recording stops as soon as you let go of the fader. Latch records an automation as soon as you move the fader but releasing the fader will continue the recording and overwrite any preceding volume information with the current audio level. Write is somewhat similar to latch but write overwrites everything and recording starts as soon as you hit play so you need to be careful with this one as it could wipe out any pre-existing data if you have used latch or write to record volume information to a clip and you just want to change a small section without having to do everything else further along in the clip, simply use touch and as it's only active for when you have your finger clicked on the fader, as soon as you let go it stops so you can just edit small points or uh, you use your mouse on the actual keyframe points here. And then of course off is, is off. So I hope that kind of made sense. It's definitely one of those things that you get to grips with a lot better when you uh, perform the task yourself. With the basic mixer properties done and dusted, let's have a look audio on the timeline. Now it's always best to edit uh, with your waveform showing. If yours isn't appearing, remember you can activate this in the timeline view option box here. And I'm just going to adjust the timeline to appear more audio friendly for this tutorial as we're not editing any video. Okay, so we add our audio tracks the same way as we add video. You can either drag the video below to create a new track or right click in the track area and select add new track. However, with audio, it gives you a different option, four different options to be exact. So you have stereo, uh, mono, if your audio only has a single channel, 5.1, which is for surround mixes, and adaptive, which is for multiple channel recordings. So, you know, you might have um, a boom recording, which is also being recorded with a lavalier. Uh, so, you know, for the most part, you're only going to need to use a stereo channel. Uh, I know it looks like on the timeline that there's only one channel. I think Premiere shows both. I think. But if you want to show both channels of the stereo audio, just right click and select display both channels. If you're working with a time code, I imagine you might not be, but this can also be adjusted by right clicking and selecting clip attributes and inputting the slight info here. But mine isn't activated because this is just a song. And finally, let's have a look at the audio transitions on the timeline. This all works in the same as we discussed in the video transition tutorial before this one in episode four. Control T will insert the standard set transition between two audio clips. And the thing is, there's, there's only really one transition you can have with audio, I guess. Uh, that's the crossfade two clips. If you have any VSTs or audio plugins, you will find them in the effects library in the audio effects panel. And this is where Resolve may fall short with audio, as say with Premiere, you do have basic audio effects like reverb, low pass, and so forth that come installed with the software. 
Uh, finally, if you want to give your clips a simple fade in on the timeline, so that at the very start, you just simply drag the top handle and slide it across. It works in the same way as video. So this is this is it. This is audio at its basics in Resolve. You should have quite a firm understanding on how to navigate your way around the audio elements of Resolve, how to mix a track or a clip with some added extras. In the next episode, we're going to look at how to export a file. So remember to like, subscribe, catch you soon.